I'm sure you've all seen countless hardcore nuzlocks with various rules and variations, each adding an extra element on top of the regular hardcore nuzlock. Today, we're going to do a hardcore nuzlock on Pokemon Emerald version by only using green colored Pokemon. To explain the rules for the regular nuzlocke rules, we have the rules that we can only catch one Pokemon per area being our first encounter, and if a Pokemon faints, it can't be used again in battle. For the hardcore additions on top of this to make it a hardcore nuzlocke, we're going to change the battle style to set, we cannot use healing items in battle, although held items are allowed, and we cannot overlevel, with the level cap being whatever the highest level Pokemon of the next gym leader is after entering the gym. Now for the color variations, we can only use green colored Pokemon. I've done a couple of videos like this in the past, and there was some confusion in the comments, but basically the Pokedex categorizes Pokemon by color and only gives each Pokemon one color each. This is the guide we'll be following to see what green color Pokemon we can use, which I will also link in the description, meaning if a Pokemon seems green but isn't categorized as green like Decidueye, which the Pokedex categorizes as brown, we cannot use it. Of course, Decidueye doesn't exist in Emerald version, but the same goes for shiny Pokemon since shiny Pokemon are categorized as whatever their base form color is. So for example, Trico is green, even though its shiny spread is actually blue, it's still going to be categorized as a green Pokemon. Also, if we do end up encountering a Pokemon like Shroomish, which isn't green but evolves into a green Pokemon early on into Breloom, then that is also fine and we are allowed to use it. Hardcore Nuzlocke can be difficult and a bit tricky, especially since Pokemon games aren't exactly designed with Hardcore Nuzlocke in mind. But one game that is similar to Hardcore Nuzlocke and is built with Hardcore Nuzlocke in mind is Abomination, which are the sponsors of today's video. Abomination is a brand new indie game made by one guy who was inspired by Nuzlocke challenges that you would see in Pokemon. It's a roguelike monster tamer, and every run has randomized Abomis, which are the creatures you fight with in this game, and areas. Abomis can permanently die, just like in a hardcore Nuzlocke variant, and you have customizable difficulty. You can toggle permadeath, adjust the difficulty, set level caps, among some other things. When I played the demo recently, I of course played on the hardest difficulty setting, and it definitely captures the hardcore Nuzlocke experience and was quite challenging. Abomination also features some quality of life improvements to make things a bit less tedious, such as a shared level for your whole team to eliminate grinding when you get a new member, no EVs or IVs to make every Abami more equal, and the game is out right now on Steam, which I will link in the description. If you like Hardcore Nuzlocke, you should totally check out Abomination today. So to highlight some of the green colored Pokemon we can use in Emerald version, there's the Trico line, Breloom, Ludicolo, Flygon, Golpin, and of course Rayquaza, or Rayquaza. No matter how I say it, somebody says I say it wrong, and I'm sure that won't change for this video either. Now there's plenty more green Pokemon, some of which we can't obtain, and most of which are grass type unfortunately, but we definitely have enough for a full team and some extras in the PC. With all that out of the way, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that since it helps the channel a ton. And now let's fire up a brand new save of Pokemon Emerald version and try to beat it doing a hardcore Nuzlocke of only using green colored Pokemon. To start off, I name our character Green, of course, pick the green border, and then immediately pick Trico since it is, of course, green. I name it Gex, starting a theme of naming most of our Pokemon after video game characters. And then after defeating our rival, I caught a Wurmple. Wurmple, of course, isn't green, but it can evolve into Dustox, which is a green Pokemon, which would add some nice type diversity to the team since most Pokemon that are green are grass type. I named it Mothman and spent some time training it, hoping that it'll evolve into a Dustox eventually, and then I caught a Lotad. It would have been cool if we caught a Routes here, since Routes does kind of look like it would be green, but unfortunately it's categorized as a white Pokemon. Before entering the Petalburg Woods, I level up Wurmple a bit, and it unfortunately evolves into Silcoon, which really stinks, and that means we won't be able to use a Dustox. Now, we do technically have another chance to catch a Cassicoon in the Petalburg Forest, although we can also catch a Shroomish, which I would much rather have as it evolves into Breloom. 
Since I think Breloom will be better for the later half of the game, while Dustox is really only good for the start. We do end up running to a Shroomish though, which I call it named Luigi, and then I go to the level cap of level 15 to fight Roxanne in her Rock-type gym. This was actually a little bit scary, even though we do have the type advantages, since her Nose Pass is bulky and does a lot of damage with Rock Tomb, which also lowers our speed. Luckily, since Lotan evolved right before battling her, it got a little bit stronger and helped out quite a lot. We hammer away and end up defeating her, getting the first gym badge, and then from there we can go to Dufruit City and immediately challenge the second gym if we wanted to. Now, Brawly's gym always gives me trouble, especially in Emerald version, so we have to be really careful here. I unfortunately don't have a Dust Ox, which would be great since it's a part Poison type that resists fighting and also has access to the Flying type move Gust. So I decide to deliver the letter to Steven first, which allows us to travel all the way over to Slateport earlier to get another encounter. The two green Pokemon we can encounter here are Electric or Gulpin. Gulpin could be good because it's a Poison type and resists fighting while Electric is fast and has Thunder Wave to paralyze our foes. We end up running into an Electric, which I caught in named Doggo, and after getting our team to the level cap of level 19, I decide to challenge Brawly. I lead with Fiesta so he can fake out his Machop and hopefully take it out quickly, but I do have to go for Growls a few times to make it a bit weaker since the battle wasn't going to go quickly, and then we can heal with some Absorbs. Unfortunately, Machop gets a critical hit and knocks out Fiesta though, so I have to go into Gex and lay waste to Machop with a Bullet Seed, and then get pretty lucky on his Metatite to bait out one of his Super Potions and kill it without taking any damage. All that's left now is his ace Pokemon Makuhita, which can do a lot of damage to us. I have Electric in the back to paralyze it if we really needed to still, but I stay in with Gex and go for Bullet Seeds. If we get lucky and hit 4 or ideally 5 times with Bullet Seed, we should be able to two-shot it, and after seeing how one hit from Makuhita knocks us down to 15 HP, I hard switch to Electric, thankfully live a hit, and land a Thunder Wave. We still have to get a bit lucky here though, since we need Makuhita to either go for a weaker move, get full parried, or we need Bullet Seed to get five hits two times. So after Electric unfortunately falls, since I don't really have much else of a choice here, I go back into Gex. Makuhita's at about 60% health here, so 5 shots from Bullet Seed might knock it out, but unfortunately we only get 3, knocking into the red and then forcing Raleigh to heal again. Makuhita then gets full paralyzed 2 turns in a row though, but I only hit 2 times on the first turn, then 3 times on the second turn, and then on the following turn get knocked out by Makuhita. All we have now is Luigi the Shroomish, which I send out and it just gets one-shotted by reversal. I knew this fight would be difficult, but now on our second attempt, we definitely have to be a lot more careful and hopefully get a Dust Ox to make this thing a bit easier. To be honest, I'm probably just going to keep resetting until we get a Dust Ox because I don't see us beating Brawly with the same exact team as we had now unless we get very lucky with Bullet Seeds, which I don't want to challenge multiple times in a row and just rely on RNG. The second attempt starts off very similar to the first one. I caught the same Pokemon, don't get a Dust Ox, but decided to continue anyway and make it to the Brawly fight with a similar game plan to last time. I lead with Gex instead though to take out his Machop better than Lombre can, although Gex gets really low and lives with only 10 HP after knocking it out. I don't think that's really much better than Lombre could have done, if at all, but on his Metatite I do go into Lombre, but take a Focus Punch and barely live. To be honest, Focus Punch kind of confuses me as a move because it has one turn to tighten focus, but if you switch when they go for Focus Punch on that turn, they still land instead of taking the extra turn. Maybe I have that wrong and I mess it up somehow, but I'm still able to take it out by spamming Absorbs to heal, but I make a risky play trying to go into Grovile, but it gets knocked out. I thought that Grovile was our only real chance of winning against Brawly, but after taking out his second Pokemon, I go into Dalgo to paralyze his Makuhita and get pretty lucky with some full paras, so I get a couple of leers off before it ends up falling too. This allows Lombre to come in on the Makuhita and do more damage with Fake Out and Secret Power, giving us the victory at a pretty hefty cost. From here I proceed across and fight our rival on the way to Mauville with only Lombre and Breloom in our party. I decided to get both of our Pokemon to level 23 so that Shroomish evolves into Breloom to help against May and Watson, since the level cap will be level 24. Lombre is able to take out her lead Pokemon Wingle, but on a Combuskin, Fiesta gets hit with a peck critical hit and falls, so all we have left is Breloom. Breloom is able to get the win for us though, but it's our 
our only Pokemon we can use until after we defeat Watson, since for some reason you can't catch Roselia on Route 117 in this game, which was a pretty common Pokemon on Route 117 in Ruby and Sapphire. Roselia just doesn't appear in this game for some reason, so I just head into Watson with our lone level 24 Breloom, and get a bit greedy and don't mock punch on his Voltorb a second time to try to get a little bit of damage off from healing, and take a self-destruct although I'm able to live. I do end up making it to his final Pokemon Manectric though thanks to some Mega Drains and mock punches, but I only have 16 HP so I know I have to stun spore the Manectric and rely on RNG to win. I do manage to paralyze the Manectric as it goes for a Howl, but it thunderwaves us back on the following turn and ultimately knocks us out a couple of turns later. This means we have to try for a third time now, and this time I'm definitely trying to get a Dustock since our strategy of letting multiple Pokemon fall to Brawly just isn't going to work out in the long run. For the third attempt, it starts out just like the first two except for when we catch the Wurmple. I named it Gothman this time instead of Mothman since the first two times Mothman didn't evolve into Cascoon, and thankfully this works out since Gothman evolves into a Cascoon, meaning we will have a Dustox for this Brawly fight. Other than that, I have the same rest of the team in Grovile, Lombre, Shroomish, and Electrike. Everything goes pretty much the same up until the Brawly fight where I lead with Dustox this time instead, since it has access to the moves Confusion and Gust to type trump his entire team. Dustox resists fighting and ends up going through this gym very easily, even easier than some of the Rock Sand fights which is kind of hard to believe since we have mostly Grass types, which makes me more confident for the near future of this run, mainly just the Watson gym. We haven't lost any Pokemon so Watson shouldn't be too bad, but after Watson we have the grueling task of fighting Flannery and her fire type team and I have no idea what I'm going to do for her. Dustox did also learn Protect somewhere in here so I know that Dustox will be valuable for the 5th gym as if you have Protect against Norman Slackings, it goes by a lot easier so I definitely want to preserve Dustox until at least the 5th gym badge. For now though, we have to go up north through Slateport City and into Mauville, where we have another rival fight along the way. I led with Doggo to take care of her lead Wingle, but unfortunately get critted and knocked out by her Lombre, so I go to Breloom to finish off her team, much like how Breloom finished off her team in the second attempt that we tried. Losing Doggo really isn't that bad, as we can't evolve it and it's pretty weak without being evolved, but it's still a loss that could have been avoided if we didn't get hit with a critical hit. For Watson's gym, the cap is now level 24, and I know the only Pokemon that can do real damage to his team is going to be Luigi the Breloom with mock punches mostly, so I lead with Luigi to take out Voltorb with a crit in one hit, then also take out his Electric and Magneton without even taking any damage on Breloom. All that's left now is his ace Pokemon Manectric, which does get a critical hit on us with the Shockwave and puts us at above slightly above half health, but luckily we get a revenge critical hit with Headbutt, knock it out, and get the victory. So far this run is going about as well as it possibly could, but we do still have a few fire type Pokemon to take care of pretty soon in Flannery and the Team Magma fights, so I'm really not looking forward to that, since I don't think any green Pokemon we can obtain between now and Flannery's gym are particularly good against fire types. The funny thing is, right after we defeat Flannery, we can go get a Lily Fossil and evolve it into Cradilly, which is a part rock type and pretty good against Flannery, and also catch a Trap Inch, which evolves into a Vaybrava, which then evolves into Flygon, which is a part ground type that is also good against Flannery. The game's almost teasing us by telling us, hey, you can get a couple of good Pokemon against Flannery, you just can't access them until after you beat Flannery. I'm not really sure what we're going to do going forward, so I'm definitely going to have to figure some of that out. I couldn't play for a couple of days after this previous part, but in that time I brainstormed ideas to get through Flannery without losing any Pokemon, especially Dustox, since Dustox having Protect should be good for Norman's gym. I decided to ask the only other person I know who has experience with these type of things in Flygon HG. He's done a lot of challenge videos like this in the past, and I'd like to think he's largely responsible for why this type of video is so popular on YouTube. I asked him how I could beat Flannery with this team and then sent him a picture of our team. His response? He told me that I am so terrible at Pokemon and that the only way I can beat Pokemon games is if I have a strategy guide right in front of me to hold my hand the whole time and I should just get good. Okay, I'm just joking, he didn't say that. His actual response though was, oof. At this point, I figured we were screwed. 
A few minutes later though, he followed up with some more advice though, like to use Lombre and Dust Ox to stall out his lead Numel's overheats, and try to use Bulk Up to sweep with Breloom, and just hope for no critical hits. I can't think of any other better strategy since we can't access any type trumping moves for any of her Pokemon right now, and I also figure I should probably Eevee train a little bit so Breloom can sweep easier and maybe so my other Pokemon can take special attacks better. I'll also leave Flygon HD's channel in the description in case you guys want to go check it out and subscribe. The next thing I do is take on the Winstraight family's house so we can get the Macho Brace as it makes us gain more EVs while Eevee training. I then Eevee train Breloom on Route 1 against some Puchienas for attack EVs, and later on learned that we actually maxed out Breloom's attack stat because when I tried to use a protein on it to boost its attack stat even more, it didn't work. I then taught it bulk up, return, and gave it the Silk Scarf item to maximize our damage output for Flannery's Pokemon. I noticed that our happiness isn't quite maxed out yet, but I tried to max it out as best as I could, and it's still the strongest move we could possibly go for. After I finished EV training Breloom, I then decided to EV train Gotham, Gex, and Fiesta with HP EVs against Whismers in the Rust Turf Tunnel. This will allow us to take fire moves a little bit better, and although EV training for special defense would have been a bit better, I went for HP since it's a bit more versatile for later on in the game. This whole ordeal of EV training and getting all these items together took about 5 hours of in-game time, so now we can finally prepare to fight against Flannery. We really need to abuse her AI a bit, with switches and baiting overheats to have a chance and not get hit by a critical hit. I led with Mothman and saw her Numble go for random moves, so I just go into Fiesta as she switches into her Slugma a few turns in. I knock out Slugma with Fiesta, then go back to Dustox on her new mole to tank an overheat. Once this happens, I knew that this was pretty much the best case scenario. I really want to set up bulk ups for Breloom on this Numble since its other moves really can't do much to it, and if overheat lowered its special defense, we can take hits no problem. The big issue is that we need to get off 6 bulk ups to ensure a KO on Torkoal, and also have to be careful of Sunny Day which boosts her fire type moves by a little bit. After a few turns and overheats, I feel safe to finally go into Breloom, set up our bulk ups, and sweep her whole team with return. This battle really came down to just abusing her AI and not getting hit by a critical hit, but once we exit the gym with our shiny new gym badge, we see Mei who gives us the Go Goggles. This means we can finally go into the desert and get two new green Pokemon, one being either Cacnea or Trap Pinch, whichever we encounter. As Trap Pinch evolves into Vibrava and then Flygon, both of which the Pokedex categorizes as green Pokemon. And also get the Root Fossil, which turns into Cradilly, another green colored Pokemon. Luckily, we encounter Trap Pinch first, which I think is a bit better than Cacnea, so I caught it and named it HG. I resurrect the Lilip and name it Groot. Although we can't evolve either of them until after we defeat Winona and the level cap gets raised, which might be harder than Flannery now that I think about it. Before we fight Winona though, we have to go and fight Norman and his annoying slacking. I thought this whole time that Dustox with Protect would be our best bet here, and that might be the case if this was Ruby and Sapphire version, but his Emerald team is a bit different. For Norman's game plan though, he has a Spinda with Teeter Dance that can confuse us and cause a problem. I play a bit risky and lead with Breloom anyway, get off a bulk up, take a Psybeam, and then knock out her Spinda with a Mach Punch. I then calc against Vigoroth and see that I can take slashes pretty well, so I set up more on it. And after getting to as low as 18 HP, I managed to get 6 bulk ups off, and I just Mach Punch the Vigoroth and Linoon to one-shot them, and get a level up in the process, which might help us with one-shotting the slacking, depending on damage rolls and what EVs and IVs the slacking has. I'm not 100% sure how Nature's and Eevee's and Ivy's work for Gym Trainer Pokemon. I did try looking it up and from what I understand, they have no EVs when it comes to Gym Leaders, their IVs are randoms and so are their Natures. So when I count all of this, I just assumed they had a neutral nature with max IVs. Once the slacking comes out though, I just mock punch it and thankfully one shot it for the victory. Breloom is definitely the MVP of this run so far, carrying us through two difficult gyms now. However, with the next gym being flying type, I don't think that we're going to be able to rely on Breloom as easily as we are now. On our way to the township of Fortree City, I caught a Tropius, which I named Yoshi. I don't think I'll really use it, but it's another cool Pokemon to have. 
We then have to save the people in the Weather Institute, get a cast form, which we can't use because it's not green, beat May with our Breloom, and once I make it to Fortree, I immediately meet Steven so we can catch a Kecleon, which of course is green. Kinda funny how it's green when it has the ability color change. I forgot I could catch it until I got here to be honest, and seeing that it can learn Shockwave, it could be our answer to all of these flying types we're going to have an issue with in Winona's gym. I decided to catch the Kecleon and name it Slippy, and then start thinking about ways to defeat Winona. I decided to do something that sounds pretty dumb, which is to EV train Slippy in special attack, then teach it Flamethrower, Ice Beam, and Double Team for Winona. You get all of these TMs from the game corner, which you can get by just buying all the coins or by gambling your hard earned money away. And while EV training, I realized that Double Team was practically useless since most of our Pokemon have Aerial Ace, which can't miss. I do some damage calculations and notice that Kecleon can two shot everything on her team while my other Pokemon can take non-flying type moves pretty easily. Her lead Swablu has Parish Song though, which is tricky, but once we defeat Winona, we get a big reward of being able to evolve Lilip and Trapinch into green Pokemon, both of which aren't weak to flying and ice like most of our team is right now. It's a shame we can't evolve them sooner, but I do give Slippy a Citrus Berry, and on her lead Swablu, I Ice Beam to bait the heal, although she Perish Song, so I have to switch into Lombre to reset it, fake it out, and then go back into Kecleon, which should kill with another Ice Beam. She switches too though into Pelipper, which I can easily one-shot with Thunderbolt. She confuses us, but I stay in and knock it out anyway. Then she goes back into Swablu and Parish Songs, but I Ice Beam it for the knockout after getting hit by Confusion. On our Tropius, I decide to go into Lombre to reset the Parish Song, fake out, then go back to Slippy and take an Aerial Ace just to knock it out on the next turn. Next up is Skarmory, which I Thunderbolt to do about over half, get healed by my Citrus Berry after taking a hit, and then Thunderbolt a second time to knock out the Skarmory after taking an Aerial Ace. Due to Slippy's color change ability, we are now a flying type, meaning her final Pokemon Altaria will most likely go for Aerial Ace, which we can live, or a Dragon Dance and not Earthquake, since we're of course a flying type now. I Ice Beam as she Dragon Dances and then heals, and then tank an Aerial Ace and knock her out on the following turn with another Ice Beam. Sometimes just brute forcing your way through gyms like this seems to work out, which is great, and although we are far from finished with this game, and there are still some tough battles ahead, there's no doubt that Flannery and Winona were the most difficult for this type of challenge. I then continue along and make it into Lily Cove City, and then decide to take a little bit of a break since I spent so much time today planning for Flannery and then Winona. Our next task is to go to Mount Pyre, pick up the Giga Drain TM on the way, then go to the Magma Hideout that I always forget about since this wasn't in Ruby and Sapphire version. The team leveled up a bit here to match Maxi's Pokemon a bit better, and in the process, Grovile evolved and I started using Trapinch, which also evolved into Vibrava. I used Luigi the Breloom for the lead against his Mightyena, Slippy for his Crobat, and then go to Fiesta to take out his camera. At this point, I realized we also need a better answer to Flying-type Pokemon and Flying moves in general, since Kecleon alone can't do it all, so I decided to take Groot the Lilip out of the PC, Eevee train it for max HP, and then get it to level 40 where it evolves into Cradilly. Then we can go into the Aqua Hideout near Lily Cove City, pick up the Master Ball, take care of the admin with Luigi and our new Cradilly, and then exit and make our way into Moss Deep City. I'm excited to get this gym badge since we can then use Dive outside of battle after receiving it, which is needed to get a Water Stone to evolve our Lombre into Ludicolo. From here, I spend about 30 minutes planning and running around to get items for the gym battle against Tate and Liza, which include getting the TM for Shadow Ball to teach to Kecleon, and getting the Black Glasses for HG the Flygon so Crunch can do more damage in case we need to go into it. Tate and Liza have their signature Solrock and Lunatone in the back and lead with Zatu and Claydol. I really don't want to let them set up light screens, which would make it really hard for us to win, since of course we're playing Generation 3 and the physical special split is a bit different from what it is in modern Pokemon. So I decide to leave with Cradilly and Kecleon to try and take out their leads, mainly their Clay Doll, as fast as possible. Kecleon has max special attack EVs with Shadow Ball and Cradilly has max HP with Giga Drain, but this didn't go as smoothly as I originally thought. 
I feel like I tend to underestimate how good Tate and Liza are, and I start off by hammering away at their intrepid clay doll because it's annoying, but they keep healing and allowing Zatu to go for Calm Minds. I may have been a bit too aggressive with this approach since Slippy ends up falling pretty early, but I do go for Amnesia on Clay Doll to help take special moves a bit better. I then send out Fiesta to use Surf to hit both of their Pokemon, and then Groot takes out Zatu with Rock Tomb on this turn. From here I thought it would be smooth sailing with Surfs and Giga Drains, but shocker, I was wrong. Switching in a double battle is just a bit too risky, so I stand with Fiesta in an attempt to take out his clay doll, which is causing me some problems, but she heals it again. Cradilly is holding its own pretty well with a Giga Drain and a Held Citrus Berry though, and although they heal up again, Cradilly is still doing alright, although they do knock out Fiesta. I then go into Septile here to try and just brute force Solrock with some type trumping moves like Leaf Blade, and although Solrock barely lives, it just goes for Sunny Day, and then gets knocked out on the following turn since we went through all of their heals. All that's left now is their Clay Doll, which is the Pokemon I wanted to take out first. Since this is a two-on-one battle essentially and Light Screen ran out a few turns ago, we're able to take it out pretty quickly. These are two pretty big casualties though, since I really, really wanted a Ludicolo, and Kecleon was just pretty good all around, not being a Grass-type Pokemon and having pretty good coverage. I did also spend a good amount of time EV training it against Spindas and Slugmas for special attack EVs, but luckily we have Cradilly and our soon-to-be Flygon to fill that void of two Pokemon that aren't just weak to flying, and we do technically still have one more green encounter later on. Now we have some Team Aqua and Team Magma shenanigans to take care of with Steven and then without Steven with Team Aqua, where I play it a bit risky against Archie with my Cradilly and just stay in after getting swaggered, but luckily we win anyway and don't get punished. Just brute forcing our way through some situations has worked out pretty well for us, so I do the same thing against the 8th gym leader, Wallace, and just brute force our way through with Sceptile. I tried coming up with a plane here that involved bulking up with Breloom or using Cradily to tank, and everything I came up with had some sort of flaw, so I figured our best bet was to just brute force with Sceptile and then possibly switch out on the Kingdra after going for one attack, but luckily his Kingdra just went for double teams and never attacked Sceptile, and went down pretty easy. We beat him without even taking any damage, and there is technically one more green Pokemon we can catch in Rayquaza like I alluded to earlier, although the issue is it's level 70, which is above the final level cap of the champion, so even if we do end up catching this, we can't even use it in battle. I then make our way into the Victory Road entrance and prepare for the upcoming Wally fight. Now I thought the Wally fight was at the very end of the cave like it is in Ruby and Sapphire, but no, it turns out that the Wally fight's actually towards the start in Emerald version. I planned on using Cradilly and Flygon for most of the fight, although since I was caught off guard, I was leading with Sceptile when I really wanted to lead with Cradilly. I just immediately switch into Cradilly on his Altaria to take it out with Ancient Power. I then take out the Del County 2, then go to Flygon on his Magneton and take out the rest of his team with Flygon. This battle wasn't really too bad since our team matches up pretty well against Wally, and after making it to the other side of the Victory Road, I decided to regroup for a little bit. I go and get the Dragon Claw TM for Flygon, although I forgot to teach it to it right away, but at least we won't be needing it until a little bit later on in the Elite Four. I then EV train some of our Pokemon a bit to get more special attack EVs for Flygon's Dark type moves, and attack EVs for Tropius so it can go for Fly a bit easier and then add Gothman back to the team since we have an extra slot and I deposited it a long time ago for Flygon and Cradilly. Turns out there's only actually 9 obtainable Pokemon we could have got in this Emerald version run with only green colored Pokemon, which include the 6 Pokemon on our team right here, which we'll be going to the Elite 4 with, as well as Kecleon, Electrike, and Ludicolo. Rayquaza is technically the 10th Pokemon since it is considered to be green by the Pokedex, but of course it's above the level cap. I then think up of a plan for the Elite Four members and the champion and head in to fight Sydney. Breloom defeats Sydney in two shakes of a lamb's tail since it's a fighting type Pokemon and I just taught it Brick Break which I got from Sutopolis City. Then for Phoebe's Ghost types, I plan on using Flygon since it has Crunch, good special attack EVs, and the Black Glasses. 
It's able to take out her lead Dusclops, and then I switch into Great Dilly on her second Dusclops because I got cursed and I want to get rid of it on Flygon. Turns out her other Dusclops has Ice Beam, which I didn't even realize, making this battle a bit more difficult. Cradilly can tank Ice Beams decently well, so I try to get up Amnesias to heal with Giga Drain as well. But Cradilly ends up getting frozen, and her Pokemon also happens to have Earthquake, which does a bit more damage. I try to stall it out by switching around too to bait out some Ice Beams and some Earthquakes, and notice how Dustox can actually take hits pretty well and stall with Protect in Moonlight. But of course, her Dusclops also has a Rock-type move to hit our Dustox super effective. It can still take hits decently well, and I really only brought Dustox to be Death Fodder. And helping us against Phoebe is more than I could have asked it to do since it really overperformed here. Dustox eventually falls, and after doing some damage calcs, I realize that our only chance of knocking out her Dusclops is if we get a good damage roll on Crunch to knock it out, or if we get a bad damage roll and then Dusclops just doesn't go for Ice Beam. She unfortunately lives a crunch with just one HP and then Ice Beam's flying on to knock it out. I know that this will make the rest of the run just that much more difficult, but Tropius is able to come in and take out some of her Pokemon before Sceptile comes in to finish off her last Pokemon. Next up is Glacia, and after doing some damage calcs, I noticed that Breloom with two bulk ups can sweep her whole team, and her lead Celio can't really do much damage to us, with the most threatening thing can do to us is go for Encore and then spam Ice Balls. It ends up going for Hail first turn and then missing an Ice Ball, so I basically get two free bulk ups off, so I decided to just go for a third bulk up to ensure Mach Punch will kill everything on her team just to be safe. We only get down to about half health after the Ice Ball and some Hail damage before finishing off her team. Fourth up is Drake and his Dragon type team. We have no access to Ice moves since we lost Lombre a while ago, and no Dragon Pokemon since we lost Flygon. I do still have that TM for Dragon Claw, which I never gave to Flygon, and it's pretty lucky that I still have it and forgot to teach it to Flygon since we can now teach it to Sceptile. Against Drake's lead Shellgon, I led with Sceptile to take it out with a Dragon Claw after getting our speed lowered by Rock Tomb. On his Flygon, I know that it has Flamethrower, so I go into Cradilly to tank it and heal with a Giga Drain, but it also has Earthquake. I'm able to take it out with only 54 HP remaining, and on the Altaria, I play it a bit risky and stay in to Ancient Power it, since I know there's a good chance of it going for Dragon Dance, and if I switch, it'll be worse than just staying in. We end up doing over half damage with it, and then tank an Aerial Ace to knock out the Altaria. On Kingdra, I have to be real careful, so I go into Breloom to take Surf. I knock it out with only two returns, and now all that's left is his Salamence. I have to switch since Breloom was intimidated and has pretty low HP, so I unfortunately have to sack off Cradilly since I figured it would be the worst Pokemon to use against the champion. From here I go into Tropius to tank hits and spam Flash and then heal with Synthesis. We're able to get off only 4 Flashes after missing 3 before we fall to Salamence. From here our only real chance to win is to 2 shot with Return from Breloom and dodge Flamethrowers after getting all those Flashes off. The issue with this is Return is a damage roll, and the first one does just under half damage. I make a mistake and click bulk up by accident because for some reason I thought it would be a better idea in the moment instead of just going for a return and hoping for a crit or a super high roll, as his Salamence unfortunately breaks through the flash and knocks me out with Flamethrower. Now to be fair, even if I did click return, Salamence had a better chance of living the return than not living the return, so I'm forced to go into our last and final Pokemon, Sceptile, which was also our starter of course, which lives a Flamethrower and Dragon Claw Salamence to 1 HP and then knocks it out on the following turn after it heals with its berry. For the champion, all we have is Sceptile. I'm able to take out his lead Waylord pretty easily, but then his Milotic goes for Toxic, meaning our chance of winning is now slim to none, as with an untoxic Sceptile, it was at least somewhat possible to win, assuming we got super lucky against his Tentacruel. We do knock out his Milotic, but can't really do much to his Tentacruel outside of getting critical hits like I just mentioned. It goes for Sludge Bomb, gets a critical hit, and knocks us out ending our run here. Crit or not, I don't think we would have won either because we were still toxic and still had to deal with the Gyarados even if we did get through the Tentacruel, but I still think we did pretty well, all things considered. 
I'm still pretty new to this whole hardcore nuzlocke thing, and as long as the journey was fun, I think it makes for a good or interesting video, I think that's what matters the most to me. This particular run took way longer than the other two color challenges I did with red Pokemon and blue Pokemon, mainly because we had mostly grass types and Emerald version is pretty unforgiving to grass type Pokemon. If you want to see some more challenge videos like this, let me know in the comments down below with what challenges you want to see. And also make sure to leave a like if you want to support the channel and subscribe for more Pokemon videos too. With all that out of the way, I want to thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a good rest of your day. I will see you next time and bye bye.